Hey there, I'm Danny Truster from Truster Taylor in Rochester, Minnesota. This is Taylor It Yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew on a button using a backer button. This is typically used on heavier weight garments like jackets and coats and things made out of leather. It gives the button a little bit more stability and durability so that it's less likely to rip out of the surface of the fabric. Sewing on a button with a backer button is pretty much the same as sewing on a normal button. Um, it's just that when you go through the fabric on the inside of the garment, instead of just going back through, you hook it around a second backer button. Backer buttons are usually a small clear button that has two holes or four holes. I tend to use a four hole button just so that so much button thread doesn't get wound up between two holes. It spreads it out a little bit better if you use a four hole. So we have this heavy weight pea coat um, where the top button has come off. So I'm going to sew it back on using a backer button. It didn't have one before, but I want to give it a little more stability and durability since it's the top button. So we're going to add a backer button when we put that back on. When you do sew on coat buttons, I rec highly recommend using button thread. It's waxed and a lot heavier weight than normal thread. Um, if you didn't want to go pick up a spool of button thread, you can use several strands of normal weight thread on the same needle, and then it'll give it a little bit more heftiness um, to hold up a little bit better. So you can cut about two feet of thread. That should be enough to sew your button on. And then you can put that on your needle. And tie an overhand knot. I usually do two passes to make the knot a little bigger. And then you can snip the end of the thread off there. So you can see on the, on the fabric here where the old button was. So you'll take your needle and insert it in that spot and pull through the back side. And instead of going straight back through like you would a normal button, this is when we're going to add our backer button. So you put the button on the thread and let it fall to the fabric and we'll make a cross pattern like our outside is. So we'll put it in the diagonal buttonhole and then push back through the fabric and pull to the front side. So now we're back on the front so we can put our outside button back on. And on a lot of pea coats, these buttons have a anchor pattern. So we just wanna make sure that the T pattern of the anchor is going with the rest of it. So we'll go through the side hole and then we're gonna be making a cross pattern. So we'll put it in the diagonal hole and back to the area. And when you put the needle through, you wanna make sure that you get that backer button caught. And I put it through the opposite set of holes on there. So when you pull this thread through, you wanna pull it so that it brings the buttons too close to the fabric, but you don't wanna to pull it totally tight because we wanna be able to make a shank at the end and a shank is a little bit distance between the fabric and the button and it allows you to have a little space when you lap over and button the other side so that it's not all smushed in there. So again, we'll make a cross pattern go through the diagonal buttonhole and push through the other side. And again, I'm pushing it through the set of holes that we don't have thread on already. And sometimes your thread gets a little bit tangled and you straighten that out. Finish pulling it through. And we want again, want to try to make our anchor stay upright. So we'll kind of control the direction it's going and then push through the diagonal hole. You can kind of feel with your other hand on the back side, on the inside, where that button hole or where the other button is so that you can put, make sure you're pushing it through it. And we'll go through one more time in each set of holes to make sure it's extra secure. And now that we've done two sets of holes in both the front button and the backer button, we're gonna push it one last time 
through the fabric to the front side, but instead of going through the button, you kind of go behind the button. This will put the thread on the back side and will allow us to wind our shank. So now that we have that, you can see there's a little bit of space in between the jacket and the button. So we'll take our excess thread and we'll kind of wind that around the thread that we put in there. As you can see, as we wound around there, it adds a little bit of a spacer in there so that it'll accommodate it when we lap this side over. So to secure that, you'll take your needle and stick it through the middle of the shank and push it through and pull tight and then snip off the needle. And you wanna, in this case, I just snipped off whatever I had left, but you wanna leave two to three inches of a tail on there so that you can get your hands in there and be able to tie it. So you can tie a few overhand knots and then you can snip the thread about a quarter of an inch away from where the knots are. So we don't want it to come untied. And there you have it. We've got our button back on, secured with a backer button. So it'll be nice and durable, so when there's stress on there, it'll distribute the stress point. Instead of it all being on one little point of the fabric, it'll be distributed between the two buttons and it's less likely to rip out. And there you have an easy way to make your jackets and coats last a little bit longer. For more information and courses, including downloadable PDFs, visit our website at tailoryourself.com. And always remember, measure twice, cut once. Thanks for watching.